So let's talk about um, match set fancy serial numbers, okay? This is whenever you have the exact same serial number. Well, hold on, actually. Not the exact same, but you have the same numbers, all right? A serial number on our American currency is not, not just uh, numbers. Our serial numbers also include letters, okay? So technically, you can have a string of 11 characters. The reason 11 is because on $5 bills up to $100 bills, we, of course, have two letters in uh, the front and the prefix, okay? Not every currency follows that, but the American currency, that's just how we do it. So let me get my stand set up here because I have some serial numbers that I would like to show you. I'm going to show you an error of duplicates and I'm going to show you a um, non-error duplicates. All right, let me see what Edmund said. Why don't you make a stream for the short runs for the one and one hundred dollar? That is a great idea. We just might talk about that next week, talking about the special blocks. All right, let me grab my note here. For the regular back, you're, you're talking about modern notes, right? Series 1963 to present. That is mostly what I talk about. Um, it's about 99.99% of actually what I talk about. I very rarely talk about older bills. I am just a modern guy if you will okay make sure that these are the same here yep i am busting out the phone and we're gonna switch to um we're gonna switch to the phone cam so i can show you guys what exactly it is i'm talking about here All right, Diane's also interested in the special blocks. Yeah, Diane, I know I have some videos in the group, in the archive on special blocks, but we will do one probably next week. We might even talk about them a little bit today, honestly. Okay, move this out of the way. So, pair serial numbers. Let's switch to All right. Here we go. Get this thing rotated here. And All right, you guys are not seeing what I want you to see, so let me see if I can't rotate this for you. There's got to be a way. Here, let me rotate the screen real fast. Oh, almost there. Okay. And let's go ahead and snap that into place. So, when we are talking about pair serial numbers or match set serial numbers we're talking about two bills all right that have the exact same serial number now these are two mighty rare fancy serial numbers they have the same string of eight digits all right the same string of eight digits you can notice also the front two letters are the same but the last two letters are not the same. Now, this is not an error. This is a really, really cool thing that you can do while you are collecting. Okay, these are matched set fancy serial numbers. Check that out. These are two sets of binary radars. They're also six of a kind sevens. No, these are nearly a one in a million chance. We got two of them here that are the same serial number now there is something to be said about pair serial numbers you guys okay first of all the more rare the serial number is 
the easier it is to make a pair. All right. Now, maybe it might not seem that way, but that is the truth. All right. And let me snap this properly to size. There we go. So the more rare your serial number is, the easier it will be to find its matched pair. Now, there are a few different criteria of making matched set notes, all right? There's different levels of difficulty to this thing. First of all, the easiest pairs to get are just whenever you have the eight digits that are the same, all right? So we can see here 7977, 7797. The bottom is 7977. 7797. These eight digits are matching and therefore they are the same. Now, you notice we actually also on this set here, we have two letters that match up as well. Both of these notes are San Francisco District issued $1 bills. That is really, really cool. There are, here are the different tiers. The easiest pairs to make are just having the eight digits match up. It is very, very hard to get um, all the letters matching as well. Now, if you had all the letters and the digits matching, what that would mean is that the series has to be different, okay? And here's why. On our currency, every serial number has to be unique. Now, you can see here that these, although they look the same, they are still unique, all right? We have a D and a B. But let's say this was L79777797D, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, and this was also L79 7, quad 7997D, 7, 7, okay? It, the serial numbers can be the same exactly, letter for letter, number for number, as long as the series are then different. If you have a perfect match on your serial numbers, letters and numbers included, that means your series will be different. If, for some reason, you have the same series and you have the exact same serial numbers, letter for letter and number for number, you have an error on your hands. And here is an example of an error where this exact thing occurred. I am, of course, talking about the 2013B duplicate star note error. Now, let's go over the specs of these bills. This is from series 2013 on bottom. These are two notes that are slabbed together. And let me see, uh, let me read the chat real fast here. Harry says, do you have any information on $1 bills with only seven digits and both serial numbers completely missing the eighth? Yes, Harry, that would be an error. Um, and then... Edmund is saying the X for the blue seal, 1957. Now, 1957 on the $1 bill, those were the silver certificates. Those got down to X a little bit more. I don't have a whole bunch of information, but I do have a book that I can reference for you, and we will get to that soon. So this bottom $1 bill is series 2013. The first letter is B, and the suffix is a star. And then up top, we can see that this note up here is also 2013. The first letter is a B, and the suffix is a star, okay? So there are plenty of notes that have a prefix and suffix match in a series, but now we need to look at the eight-digit string of numbers, okay? So we have 0568351. If we go up top, we got 0568351. So this, these two bills have the exact same 10 um, character stream, string, sorry, and they're from the same series. That is a problem. That is what you call a duplicate serial number. So if the series is the same, there is going to need to be at least one thing different about the serial numbers, whether it be the prefix, the suffix, or one digit, or whatever. If the series and the 10 or, or 11, uh, 
unit serial number, if you will, I'll just say digits, but that also includes letters, okay? If that serial number is the same, you have an error, and that is exactly what this is. This is a pair of 2013B duplicate star notes. This is an error. That is not supposed to happen. So going back to this fancy serial number set, this right here is not an error, all right? Not an error. This is just a really, really cool set of fancy serial numbers. Quite nice. Excuse me. Quite nice set indeed. So, that is the beginning of pairs. Now, you guys heard me say that a pair of serial numbers, the rarer the fancy serial number is, the easier it is to make a pair. Let's just say... I had a solid sevens note, which I do, but it's not in yet. All right. Well, I, okay. Anyways, um, let's just say I had this was all sevens. There are only eight solids per run. Solid ones, twos, threes, fours, five, six, sevens, and eights. They do not make solid nines on modern paper money that is intended for circulation. With that being said, you still can find solid nines, but today on money that is series 1974 to present, and let me just go on ahead and double check there. I believe it's 1974 to present. Yep, on money that is series, well, mostly, okay? It's really past 1974. You're not going to find solid nines. 1977 to present for the $1 bills, you will not find solid nines. Reason being is because in 1977, for the $1 bill, they officially stopped printing to all nines, and they transitioned to a maximum print run of 99840000 okay? So, solid nines today, you're only going to find those bills on an uncut sheet. So, it's still possible but they're not notes that are intended for circulation. So with that being said, um, let me tell you something, guys. A solid would be very, very easy to pair up. The only difficult thing about pairing up a solid set of serial numbers is forking over the cash to purchase them. All right, That would be the only difficult thing. If there's only eight solids, you basically have a one in eight chance of matching those serial numbers up. Now, these right here are binary radars. <clears throat> there are only two digits, and they can be read the same forwards as backwards. So a binary radar has 105 examples per run. So to match up a set of binary radars, there is really only po a pool of 105 to pick from. Now, I have another set of serial numbers, actually two more sets of pair serial numbers that I need to show you guys. These are pretty crazy. Let me go on ahead and pull them out, all right? They're up on my eBay store, I believe. Let me go on ahead and grab them down, though, real fast. I have a extremely rare set and then a more rare set. Believe it or not, although these two notes are extremely fancy, the pair of matched serial numbers is not as hard to find as some of these other ones I'm getting ready to pull out for you guys. So let me grab these real fast. If I can find them. Actually, I got, I got a few pairs, actually. So, there are many different ways to make pairs. You can go across the denominations. Those are pretty cool to do. I would say that going across the denominations is actually the easiest way to make a pair of match serial numbers. Because now your pool that you're able to pick from is much, much larger. To be contained in the same denomination, that's kind of difficult. It is tough to find a pair of ser uh, matched serial numbers in um, really any denomination. But I have to say, 
Oh, and here we go. This one's in number one. So we're going to go uh, down next. Here is a cross-denominational pair. This is a true trinary super ladder. These are quite rare. You can see here, triple zero, triple one, double two. All right, quite a rare serial number there. Let me get you the numbers on those. There are only one, actually this is a little bit more common, the pair that is, the serial number is rare. There's only 102 super ladders per run of 96 million notes. So um, now, although since these cross denominations, we would have to take 102 times 7 and then also multiply that by all of the print runs they did. But basically what I'm saying is we'll just simplify it. There's 102 notes to pick from to potentially make a pair, if that makes sense, right? So this pair is actually just a little tiny bit more common than this pair is. Now, don't get, get me wrong here. These fancy serial numbers are extremely rare, okay? These are true trinary super ladders, and these are binary radars. I'm just talking strictly having pair serial number sets, all right? It would be the hardest to match up a pair of trinaries, all right? A pair of trinaries. A trinary is any fancy serial number that only has three unique digits in it. So let me go on ahead and see if I can find my other match set. All right, it's in 31 and then 8. Let me get them pulled out for you guys. I found on that super ladder set I just showed you guys, one of those was found in the wild, and then the other one was purchased. These two were purchased. These are a set of binaries, all right? Just binaries. They're not binary repeaters or binary radars or anything of the sort like that. These notes right here are just binaries. Now, let me get my other set pulled out. All right. And then right here, if I can find it, 31C, that's 32, that ain't it. We are live, so thank you guys for your patience while I'm flipping through my inventory system here looking for that last set of bills. I bet you it's this one. No, it's not. Hmm. Huh. One of my envelopes has grown legs and ran away from me. But while I am looking for that, we will go on ahead and talk about this pair that's in front of us. So this is a set of two binary fancy serial numbers, okay? Um, they're both from 2003. Now, that's kind of cool to find them in the same series, you guys. So the hardest would be to have them in the same series, the same serial number with one letter matching, all right? So if these were both like E's, and this was an EB, and then the next one would be an EC, that's very, very, very tough to do. Same district, same series, same serial number, that's pretty much as cool as they can get. Now this is really cool that it's the same series. The easiest, again, pairs to make are cross-denominational, whenever you have like a one and a five, or a one and a two, still cool. Then to get it a little bit harder, you would just want to have it in the same denomination, kind of like uh, this set here. This is a 2021 and then uh, um, 1993. And then to get even cooler, you'd want to have a couple of letters matching. Now, what would be really, really hard to do as well 
is to have both the letters and the serial numbers matching and then just have them from different series. That would be really, really amazing. Okay, so let me find this last set here. So I really cannot find it, but it'll be okay. I had a set of trinaries, I believe. No, it is not over. Sorry, guys. I was just away from the keyboard here for a second. Uh, it's not over. But I had a set, or I have a set. I just got to find it. Of, I believe they're trinaries, or they might just be five of a kinds, right? So they're... They're trinary five of a kinds, right? And they are the same serial number from the same district from different series, all right? Now, with this set that's right in front of us, there are 10,560 binaries per run. So there's about 10,560 notes that you'd have to go through to make a set. Now, with that being said, binaries are still uh, rare serial numbers that are quite desirable. But I have a pair of five-of-a-kind trinaries. Now, a five-of-a-kind, there are 412,800. 412,800, yep, five-of-a-kinds. And there are 656,100 trinaries. Now, because they are five-of-a-kinds, we would have to use that fancy to, um, for our pool. So that means there's 412,800 notes you have to look through to make a pair of five-of-a-kind trinaries. That is really, really cool. That is the rarest pair that I own, or that I have, I should say. Let me find, I don't know where on earth that thing disappeared to. I will find it, but I'm probably not going to be able to get it for you guys this stream. Sadly, the best I'm going to be able to do is point the camera at my computer screen. This is, sorry, let me move my hand out of the way. This is it both from San Francisco, matched set of serial numbers. So that's pretty cool. That is the rarest pair that I have right now. Um, what would be the hardest pair to make, though, just in general? If you could find an all-unique digits note. Now, with that being said, I'm not talking about eight-digit complete broken ladders. Those are not the same thing. If you just have eight unique digits on your bill and they do not form a broken ladder i believe there are like 1.7 million of those if you found a pair a match set of serial numbers with all unique digits that would be honestly the hardest pair i believe to find now, I haven't calculated some of those un-fancy um, serial numbers, like how many there are. Like, let's just say you have um, six unique digits and then a scattered pair. I don't know how many of those there are. Those are not fancies. But whenever it comes to pair serial numbers, you basically can take the rarity of fancy serial numbers, flip them upside down, and that'll tell you how hard it's going to be to make a pair. So... These, there was 10,560 binaries per run. So that's how many I'd have to um, have to potentially make a pair, right? There's a lot of different binaries to go through. Um, these, there's only 90, what, 95, I think it is, per run. So there's only 95 binary radars you would have to technically look through to make a pair. That being said, you guys, 
Don't get me wrong, to make any pair of fancy serial numbers is still quite difficult. But um, as you go down to the lesser fancies, it gets a lot harder. Now, whenever it comes to pricing these sets, again, it really depends on condition. It depends on the fancy. And you're going to need to find somebody also that understands the value of having like a set of trinary notes as a pair. I have sold pair serial numbers. I believe it was a pair of binaries for $255 in the past. I do not remember how much these are listed for. Uh, these are not even listed. These are just kind of chilling right now. Uh, this note just came in yesterday. And this one we've had sitting here for a little. But um, that is the general gist on pairs. The more common the fancy serial number, the harder it is to match it up. All right. With that being said, let's change gears a little bit. I'll have to find that pair and show you guys one day. But for now, we're not going to waste time. Let's change gears a little bit. We are going to talk a little bit about the runs and districts. I'll stream till 4 o'clock. It's 3.33 for me right now. So we have about 27 minutes. And Edmund, I'm not sure if you're still here. I am looking for my book. And I'm going to see if I can get you any information on the Silver Certificate X Notes. Now, I am quite sure that an X Note on a Silver Certificate is way more common. But let's see if we can't get any information about them pulled up for you. And Edmund, I don't, I, again, I don't know if you're still here, but are you uh, $1, right? You're looking for the $1? Yeah, I'll be there. Okay, actually, so this book that I have does not go into the individualized runs. Now, let me see if I can access one of the online resources to go to 1957. Hmm. And also, let me change the screen back here to the face cam. Okay. My specialty really is in series 1963 till present. That's really what I specialize in. I really don't mess too much with the older bills because I like being able to find everything bill searching. All right, for sake of time, we'll have to skip it for now because I am not able to... Actually, I'll, I'll try one more thing. Let me try just one more thing. Okay, yeah, I can't find any information on it right now, so I'm sorry, Edmund, but I'm not going to be able to answer your question on that. But let's talk about modern X notes and things of that nature, okay? This I'm going to be able to answer questions on. So there are, just so you guys know, special blocks, okay? What is a block? First of all, a block is the letters, all right? So the prefix and suffix letters together, that's what we call a block. It's like lingo. It is a quicker way to describe the district and the run. So instead of saying E district, B run, you could just say E, B block, all right? The E, B block, or the A, B block, or the A, A block, or the A, C block, something like that. Instead of me saying A district, C run, I'll just say A, B block, okay? So... Normally, they will print these bills, or a block, I should say. They'll print a block to 96 million 
notes. Okay, Not always, though. Sometimes they go short. And sometimes they go extremely short. So let me go on ahead and get some of this information pulled up. There are three types of special blocks. The first type of special blocks is short run. All right. So what are we talking about when we say run? The run is the suffix letter of your bill. The letter on the end. Okay. If you have the letter A, that means whatever bank that note came from, that's the first run. So if the last letter on your bill is an A, that means you have a first run or a run one note. Okay. There's only going to be one suffix letter. And again, I'm talking about 1963 to present, okay, which I'm pretty sure in all the older bills there's only one suffix letter as well. But for the last letter, there are there's only going to be one, okay? And it's going to be A to Y, skip O. You're not going to see O as the last letter, okay? O looks too close to zero. The BEP does not issue O. Now, that being said, there was um, a $100 block, a $100 denomination modern block that accidentally made an O. Is either they put an O as a suffix letter or a zero. And there are actually some $100 bills that have, it's an error, uh, a O slash zero on the end. I can't remember if it's an O or a zero, but basically it's almost like it's a nine digit serial number. It's kind of a little, I'll have to get some more information on that for you guys. But, um, okay, let me see what you guys see here. I'm trying to get my proper window in frame. Uh, we're just going to go about this a different way. I'm just going to close all these other tabs here, and we will go about it this way. Okay. So, this is the series 2013 block list, all right, by groups for the $1 bill. This tells us, per district, how many runs were made. There are 12 letters that can appear in the prefix position. They are A through L. And again, this is for series 1963 to present. Now, there are other um, series that follow this, but I am talking strictly about 1963 to present. Okay, So we have L all the way to A. All of these first letters represent a different bank. Okay, There are 12 Federal Reserve Banks that service the country. So the first thing we want to talk about is short runs. When I'm talking about the run, I'm talking about the letter on the end. So if we see the letter E, that means that this is the fifth run or the fifth time that they are starting over from serial number one to begin printing for a certain district. So the A district, which is Boston, Massachusetts, started at serial number one. They printed the 96 million. Boston still wanted some more notes, so they started at serial number one, went to 96 million, so on and so forth. Now, when they got to the E run or the fifth run, they started at one and ended at 44,800,000. Now, for a Series 2013 note, AE is not that scarce. The 6.6 .6 years is the average lifespan of a $1 bill. Now, it is short. There are people that would collect these. But in the future, I would think that these will become even more collectible since they're short. With that being said, let's go down to Cleveland, or D. Check this out. The H run for Cleveland had, starting at serial number one, they only went to 6.4 million. That is extremely short, you guys. That's very, very short. That's basically the shortest run you can have. I say basically because there was one series. Let me see if I can just find it. Was it 93? Um, there was one series that went to 3.2 million. That is the shortest run for the moderns. It's on a $1 bill somewhere. Let me see if I can find it. Oh, actually, no, no, no. Wait, that's uh, technically kind of a split block thing. Let me find it. Mm, 
I'm looking at these numbers, looking for 3.2 million. Because it's good to know. 1995, they were printing some web notes. It's kind of a special print there. Scrolling fast just because I'm trying to find it a little bit quicker here. My eyes can kind of scan. If, you, if it hurts your eyes, just cl close them for a moment. Let me see if it was 1999. We will find it eventually. We are looking for the 3.2 million production. Was it 81? Yes. 81. JD, series 1981 on the $1 bill. If you guys ever find the JD block, $1 bill, recommend you hold on to it. All right? It's JD, series 1981 on the $1 bill. This is the shortest one I've seen for the moderns, 3.2 million. Normally, the shortest run that you're going to get is 6.4 million. With that being said, the shorter the run, the more collectible it is. DH 2013 notes are hard to come by because they were only printed to 6.4 million. Okay? 6.4 million is quite scarce. Now, you see this little number over here. You see 1 through 15. And every time you see a 1 through 15, it means that they printed the full 96 million notes. So what is this? Okay? They print our bills on sheets. 50 subject sheets and 32 subject sheets. Now, today, they're kind of just doing 50 subject sheets. They don't really mess with the 32 subject sheets anymore. But um, since they print on 50 subject sheets, you know, 50 is an even number, they have just decided to print in lots of 6.4 million. Now, the plates that they use, and I don't want to get too much into plates right now, but the plates that they use, I believe they're designed to last 64 million stamps. I cannot remember. I've watched quite a few documentaries on it, but I don't remember the quite exact number. So don't quote me on, hey, you know, the plates are only supposed to last 64 million. I'll have to double check that information for you guys. But they will print 128,000 sheets of bills, and that is a what I call micro run. So 6.4 million, I'm using the terminology of micro run. That's not necessarily an official numismatic term. But there are 15 micro runs in a letter run. So a letter run can have maximum 96 million notes, which is 15 micro runs, because 96 million divided by 15 is 6.4 million. So here is how you want to say, um, kind of go about this. DH is a micro run of one. There was just one micro run there. The, the H letter run for Cleveland had one micro run. There are some, you can see like um, EI, which that's actually a split block. We'll talk about that later. EK had three micro runs, which means there's only 19.2 million EK block $1 bills for series 2013 printed. All right, it's still pretty scarce. Um, now, that's the first thing uh, of the special blocks, the first type of special blocks, short run. What is the second type? The second type is what I call scarce district. Again, the first letter talks of the district. Now, I'll need to get YouTube pulled up, you guys, because I do not have um, – I'm doing a window capture so if I go over to YouTube to look at the chat, it's not quite going to work. So let me get YouTube pulled up on my phone, and I'll join the live stream here. Probably it's just like a random guest. Let's see what we got, just so I can access the chat and stuff. I'm pretty sure I should be able to access the chat from this phone here. Oh, it looks like not. Okay, I guess i got to download the app. But scarce district means that there is uh, two or less runs. Okay? So the E district for Series 2001, Richmond, Virginia, is what E is denoted with, had only one production, and it was an 
A. All right, only they only did the A run, and that's it. So for series 2001, it is hard in general just to find Richmond, Virginia notes. Reason being, they only had one run, and they did not even get to 96 million notes. You can see that most of these districts, which again is the first letter, they have multiple print runs. Boston went all the way down to E. New York went all the way to H, which is the eighth letter, so it's the eighth run, which look at that, BH 2001. That's actually a short run right there, 6.4 million, so keep your eyes, your eyes peeled on that one. Um, C went to F, six prints. Cleveland went, had four runs here. Atlanta had six runs. Chicago had D. I mean, sorry, uh, four runs. St. Louis had three. Minneapolis, Minnesota also had one. It was a split block. And then San Francisco had 12, right? So there's a whole bunch of different print runs. It's normal that you're going to see, like, at least three runs, okay? Whenever you start to get two or less, and also if it is two, typically the second one would need to be a little bit short. That's going to kind of create a scarce district, uh, scenario for that series. So that's the second type of special block. And again, a block is just the first or all the letters together. Okay. So like this right here is the L and A. This would be the LA block, which is San Francisco A run. LB block, San Francisco B run or San Francisco uh, letter run two, right? So that's the second one. Now what's the third one? The third one is what I call split block. Okay. Well, what does that mean? Let's go on ahead and look over here at Minneapolis, Minnesota. Check this out. And let me just go on ahead and give you what a split block is. That is whenever they begin printing in one printing facility, which there are only two, just so you guys know, that are used today. And then they switch to a second one, or they switch really from one to the other. So in the case for Minneapolis, Minnesota, they only had one run, and it was short. They only got to 64 million, and it was split. Pretty cool. So, starting at the DC, the Washington DC printing facility, they printed the Minneapolis notes from serial number one to 6.4 million. You can see that there. They had one micro run. Then, for series Minneapolis, Minnesota, the A run, what they did is they started from serial number. 6.4 million and one, and they decided to go to 64 million. So they did micro run two to 10, printing 57.6 million notes in, from Fort Worth. 6.4 million plus 57.6 million is 64 million. In total, for the IA block of series 2001, there were 64 million notes. So the IA block is a short run, scarce district, split block production. It's pretty cool. I got all three of them there. Now, normally your split blocks are going to be like this. You can see St. Louis B run. They just decided to split right in the middle. They uh, started from seal number one, printed to 51,200,000, and then they waited a while and then started from 51,200,001. They just picked up right where they left off, but they decided to give the responsibility to the other printing facility. So there's two printing facilities that service the entire... Well, these two printing facilities, I should say, give... Um, they give all the notes. They print all the notes and give them to the 12 Federal Reserve Banks, and then those 12 Federal Reserve Banks issue those to the whole country, like our banks, right? And then those banks, of course, serve us. So welcome in Perry Custom Cards. I got it on my phone. Meredith's in the chat. Um, Myra, Myra Salinas, hello. Welcome in, everyone. So with that being said, guys, that's split block. Typically with the split block, um, you're going to want to find the ones that are split extremely unevenly. So let's go and let's go to um, – let me see if I can find one. Series 2013 did this, right? Serial number one – this is an AB block. You can see here they printed serial number one to 6.4 million from Fort Worth. Then they switched and did the remaining 89.6 million from D.C. So 
that's pretty cool. Only 6.4 million and I mean only 6.4 million notes printed at Fort Worth. That's a pretty uh, uneven split block right there. You would want to have, I mean, really, you want to have an example of both, but these are going to carry more weight to them because these are quite a short uh, block, right? The AB from Fort Worth Series 2013. Those are the three special blocks. So, again, you have short run, like, for example, DH 2013. You have scarce district, which technically... The I district for 2013 was also scarce because it only had two runs. But, you know, there's definitely much more scarce. Like, in, um, let me see. I know 2001 had one, but let's see if the other ones, any other ones do. 2003A, I only had one production as well. So that would be a scarce district. HB would also be kind of scarce as well. Um, and then you have the split blocks. Now, there are some instances where they will actually split the block more than once. Like, I've seen double split blocks. So, like, they'll go to Fort Worth, go to D.C., and then go back to Fort Worth, which I guess you kind of say it's really triple split. But, yeah, you would say it's triple split technically. Let me see if I can find one of them real fast. I've seen a couple of them. Let's see if 99 has one. Yep, right here. Atlanta, Georgia, J-Run. Triple split. Look at that. They went from Fort Worth to D.C. to Fort Worth. So that doesn't happen too often today, but it did a little bit, I guess, then. So what they did in Fort Worth, they started the production from serial number one, the $25.6 million. Then they went from $25.6 million and one to $57,600,000 at D.C., then they decided to switch back 57,600,001 and finished it off at 96 million at Fort Worth. So check that out. That's quite the split. Um, now with the web notes, they also had crazy splits, but it don't really count. Look at the FR block, guys. Check that out. We have 19.2, 70.4, and then we had a 6.4 million production there on that triple split block. So that's pretty cool. Now what's your goal with collecting these guys? Whenever it comes to the special blocks, Typically, you want to have one example of every single dollar. Okay. So what does that mean? You want to have, and they do not need to be fancy. Okay. This is a different way to collect. There's many different ways to collect paper money. Um, I'm not telling you how, how you should collect, but I'm telling you different ways to collect. So you would go through and you just want to have one example of every bill from each of these serial number ranges. So you want to have an AA 2013 $1 bill. You want to have an AB from both the Fort Worth block and the DC block. You want to have an AC, an AD, an AE. And then you're going to start to notice for these really, really short runs, they are tough little boogers to find. They are not easy to acquire. So if you can find a fancy on a short run, more power to you. Fancy serial numbers on short runs, scarce districts, that can inc incur an additional premium. So keep that in mind as well. Um, that's pretty much the main thing on the split blocks. Now, why does the split blocking happen? What we're going to do now is we're going to jump over to the monthly production reports. And we'll just do 2013. Let me zoom out a little bit here. Now, here's how we read this table. You see this November 13? That means November for 2013. This is not November 13th. This is the entire month of November for the year 2013. So in the month of November, year 2013, the only $1 bills they made were the Dallas, Texas star notes. Just so you guys know, they will actually make star notes before they even print the bills for the district. So they made some Dallas, Texas star notes right here for series 2013 before they even printed the normal Dallas, Texas notes. The reason they do that, they know that they will be making errors. And so they preemptively prepare themselves by making star notes. Now, check it out. The Dallas, Texas star notes were printed in November of the year 2013. They started printing the actual $1 intended for circulation notes in March of 2014. Check that out. Now let's look at the split blocks here. The colors indicate 
which printing facility printed the bill. Okay, we have DC is green, um, Fort Worth is purple. So, you see this right here? In September 15th, they printed the Philadelphia B run. And then two months went by, October, well, really, I guess a month went by, right? And then starting in November, they handed the responsibility off to Washington, D.C. So a lot of the times what happens, you'll see large stretches of time go by. Like, check this out. A, B, for the $1 bill on Series 2013, right? Series 2013 $1 bill. We have A, B was printed on August 14, or August 2014. They started at serial number one and printed it to 6.4 million. And then they waited an entire year until September to pick up the Boston, Massachusetts Federal Reserve Bank issued $1 bills again. Check it out. They waited a whole year pretty much. Started it from 6.4 million and one, and then went all the way down to A, uh, really I'm pretty sure it was AE, yep. So you can see sometimes they have very large stretches of time in between. And during these large, and they don't even have to be that large, but during these stretches of times, sometimes they will, excuse me, hand off the responsibility. Let's pop into 1999. All right. Let's go to F, Atlanta, Georgia, because they had a bit of a mess in here. Um, we can see, let's see if we can find, yeah, the, one of the triple split blocks like R. Look at that. They start at serial number one, go to 19.2 million. Then they go to, uh, Fort Worth, Texas. Then they go back to DC. Um, now then this, I don't know why they did this. Honestly, this was in the same month, which is really, really weird. There was basically no time put in between, now what does that mean, you guys? We can be detectives a little bit. Check it out. September 2001, we know what happened. Wait, never mind. Yeah, September 2001, guys. We know what happened in September 2001, 9-11. So something obviously affected the production of these bills. My guess would be 9-11 caused the printing facilities to have to switch and then switch back. So that's really interesting. Honestly, it is. I just kind of discovered that for myself. Um, yeah, I know that if, it's probably not a coincidence that 9-11 or September is when they did this triple. I don't know. It could just be a coincidence. It could be just like Diane is saying that maybe there is just a machinery issue. But this was a triple split block. They didn't have very many of those triple split blocks, all right? So that's kind of some interesting things to uh, talk about. Okay, so the letter U, um, Edmund, what those letters mean on a silver certificate, those second letters are just talking about the run, right? And so if you have an X, what that means is that that district got all the way down to its maximum printing capacity. So if you ever have an X note silver certificate, right? I'm pretty sure this is how the silver certificates work as well. The last letter, if it is an X, that means that they maximized and printed as many $1 bill runs for that district as they possibly could. It means that whatever letter is in the front, that district really, really needed a lot of $1 bill silver certificates, and they needed so many that they got all the way down to the last run. Actually, sorry, X is not the last run. Y is the last run, you guys. Y is the lowest letter that you can have on modern paper money. Z is reserved for test printings. All right, with that being said, you guys, that is a bit of a deep dive. And you, Ed, that's going to be kind of the same situation. That just means that what, that they got to like the 20th print or whatever letter in the alphabet U is. It might be like 18 or something. I don't, I don't know off the top of my head. Okay. If you guys have enjoyed the information that you have learned today, consider subscribing. Also, you guys, I teach a class on how to actually sell $1 bills. I know most of you in the chat are in this class. But if you would like to join, you need to check out the links in the description. I will teach you how to sell your $1 bills on eBay for the best price.
prices possible. We had a gentleman in the group. He found a true eight-digit ladder, all right? It was serial number 1234567. It was on a scarce district. It was series 2017A, JA block. It was very circulated, but because he was in the group, I was able to guide him, and he recently sold that $1 bill for $2,200. It was an outstanding sale. This was a very, very circulated bill. It had rips in it, but because I was able to tell him, hey, that is a scarce district and a short run, JA was a one-of-one one print, he was able to price it accordingly. I also helped him with the title and everything, and his note sold. There are people that have uncirculated ladders that don't even get those good of prices on eBay um, because they just do not know how to use eBay. So with that being said, if you guys want to learn how to sell, please check out the links in the description, okay? I will teach you everything about eBay. You will get access to the fancy serial number master list. That is a unique tool that I have developed that has over 100 different fancy serial numbers on it. The name, the rarity, the price, all that kind of stuff. Also, you will get access to all of the videos, the calls that you have missed. Uh, this is the official Kingdom Currency um, eBay group, all right? A lot, a lot of stuff to be had in here, you guys. We have the LifeCoin Q&A. In the Facebook group, you get access to the Facebook forum. You get access to the Patreon forum. We have about, what, uh, over 10 live calls a week. You get access to all of those pretty much. And you get access to 50% off all merchandise. So thank you, guys. Check out the links in the description below. Uh, Perry Custom Cards says he got a $10 bill, $19.96, serial number 444. Perry, that is an outstanding serial number. That is a low serial number. Those are a 1 in 100,000, 6,666 chance, I believe, off the top of my head. Might be like a couple numbers up or down. But very rare serial number right there. It's also a binary. It's got the triplicate fours. I would probably ask about $200 on that note. That would be me. All right, you guys, thank you so much, and I will see all of you guys next.